Good morning and welcome to Global Halfcast, brought to you by Global Health Press. In this podcast series, once a week, we bring to you news and views about infectious diseases, vaccines, and vaccination. I am Joe Schmidt, and with me is Dr. Melvin Senegas. Good morning to Zurich. Good morning, Melvin. Good morning, Professor Schmidt. Good morning to you in Germany. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to those who are watching or listening to us today. We welcome you to our 50th edition. And we are very happy and very proud to tell you that we have reached almost 250,000 clicks in the last couple of months that we are online. 50 editions is basically almost one year. So we are very close to meeting 250,000 clicks. And I take this opportunity to tell you a little bit more about Global Health Press. This is our access to the website and what you see here is that we have news, we have some review articles, we have a vaccinology course here, and actually, as of recently, we are uh, CME certified by the uh, respective authority here in Europe. So for each chapter you pass, you get one credit point. We have one book by now. We are covering vaccinations. We cover basics on all countries around the globe. And we, for 40 countries, have the country vaccination score. Then we have all vaccines licensed by EMA and by the FDA and all who are WHO pre-qualified in our vaccine profiles. We have a calendar of events on vaccines and vaccination. And finally, we have our podcasts in vaccine videos. Without further delay, let's go to the topics of our podcast today. Uh, Melvin will cover intelligent people get their COVID vaccines first. Very good to know. Past COVID infection, side effects and top reasons for not getting a booster. Melvin will cover as well. And then he will also cover legal gnosis in Poland. Then I will ask you and show you data. Is your vaccination status up to date and address events following COVID mRNA dosing in subject 65 plus? Without further delay, Melvin, what is the news on cognitive ability and COVID-19 vaccination? Yes, so this is a um, study published in the Journal of Health Economics. Um, it is a study of more than 750,000 people in Sweden. Um, the researchers in Uppsala University assessed the relationship between cognitive ability and prompt COVID-19 vaccination. Um, and these are men and women who registered for military service in Sweden. Um, and the team used intelligence test data from the Swedish military archives. So a total of 80% of the most intelligent people were vaccinated within 40 days of vaccine availability. While it took 180 days for more for, for those with the lowest cognitive ability to reach that level. And the results, according to the researchers, suggest mm -hmm. that the complexity of the vaccination decision could make it difficult for people with lower cognitive abilities to understand the benefits of vaccination. And I think um, I, I, I wrote here uh, TLDR, which means too long didn't read. It just says that smart people first in line for COVID-19 vaccines. Very interesting. I think we had something similar in another paper earlier this year. So it boils down to make things, explain items in an easy manner so that people can make their decisions more rapidly. And maybe that is also a charge for us to boil down the information in layman terms and to make them easy to understand. Very interesting and very, very, um, very important information, Melvin. Melvin, you also cover uh, the low COVID booster uptake among United States adults. What is the story here? Yes, so this is a 2023 survey of nearly 2,200 adults in Arizona, uh, one state in the U.S., who had received at least one COVID vaccine dose. Um, and it shows that the most common reason for not receiving a bivalent or the two strain booster um, was a previous infection, followed by concerns about vaccine side effects, vaccine safety, and vaccine effectiveness. Um, and the authors noted that as of May 2023, less than 20% of um, those who 
can get the vaccine had received a bivalent booster dose. Um, and um, implementation remains among the biggest current public health challenges as updated boosters continue to be developed and made available to the public. And I think, again, it shows us that we need to do more about uh, the explanation to the public so that they can understand the vaccine side effects, um, safety and the effectiveness and really the value of taking this vaccine, um, not just for preventing COVID or preventing serious disease from COVID or dying from COVID, but also more and more now we are seeing more data showing that the COVID vaccines can actually help with uh, long COVID. So all these things should be packaged into a, um, uh, a set of information that is easier for people to understand and digest whatever your level of uh, cognitive ability is. So this is again the same message as before. Uh, there is very good news on vaccines and vaccination, particularly when it comes to COVID with all the data that has been published by now, but you have to explain it to the public. And, and this is a very important point. So thanks for bringing this up, Melvin. Melvin, you have another uh, news piece on legionellosis in Poland. Yes, so um, Legionella um, was confirmed in the water supply system of the southeastern Polish city of, uh, I, I don't know how to say this, it's Rezzo. Um, you know, it's, it's difficult to say Polish words, but um, that's how it's spelled. Um, it's the country, the country's intelligence agency um, investigated whether the city is a target of deliberate contamination. And um, as we, we should note that this is Poland's main logistics hub for sending military and humanitarian aid to Ukraine um, and also a base for the U.S. troops. So the um, hypothesis is that this could be because of uh, contamination from um, deliberate contamination from um, another country. Yeah. Um, I know you have a next slide on a uh, little bit on legionellosis, but to the best of my knowledge, uh, the organism is present in water. So uh, I, if I were a bioterrorist, I would use, I would not use legionella, right? It doesn't have much of an impact mm -hmm. and, um, uh, you know, other organisms may be better suited for bioterrorist attack. So what is the story on legionella? Yep. I mean, uh, you have summarized it nicely here on this slide. Yeah, so this is just to, to, to basically remind people of, of what Legionella is um, and, and how it is transmitted. So it's found in the natural environment. Um, it can grow in human-made water systems, and then it can basically aerosolize and it can be inhaled or aspirated, um, and then susceptible people can become infected. Um, I also showed here the treatment for um, Legionellosis and um, According to the WHO, as of 11th of September 2023, a total of 166 cases have been uh, recorded, including 23, 23 deaths. Um, and uh, this is, uh, of course, quite uh, concerning, right? Because uh, a lot of people have been infected and um, 23 people have died. Um, and uh, they are continuing their investigation. Um, yeah, uh, so it's also good to note that um, most of these people have uh, contracted the disease by inhaling the bacteria. And to date, there has been no reported direct human to human transmission. As Legionella are found anywhere in the natural environment, um, mm -hmm. I don't see any case why this could be a bioterrorist attack but uh, it is a lack of hygiene, right? Usually you heat your water uh, in a house or in a hospital or in a nursery home uh, up to a high temperature and then the Legionella are killed and then you have no problem. So this looks to me like inadequate sanitation in the end it is, inadequate hygiene measures and that's what may have caused the outbreak. But maybe we follow this up and let's see what comes out of that uh, in the future. I have a little bit on an update uh, and I would like you to take your vaccination passport and look if you have received 
the vaccines according to age, according to your local recommendations. And what I put up here is currently available in licensed vaccines in Western countries, just to show you how far you can go, depending on where you are. Again, I encourage you to follow local recommendations. It starts with pregnancy. There's a recommendation for Tdap, influenza, and COVID. And now we have, for a very short period of time, RSV vaccine. They are licensed specifically for use during pregnancy, where Tdap, influenza, and COVID are not licensed for pregnancy, but they're recommended. So there is a different here. And RSV is not recommended yet, but I guess it will be recommended as of Friday in the United States. Let's see what comes out of this. Then we have the infant program. It is 11 inactivated or non-life vaccines and four life vaccines, measles, mumps, rubella, varicella. TBE stands for tick-borne encephalitis. I encourage you to look up local diseases like Japanese encephalitis, enterovirus 71, whatever your local recommendations are, this is what should be replaced then, um, would be replaced than TBE. Then we have booster doses that are uh, mentioned before. Then we have boosters for adults, and there you also have to look at workplace vaccines. If you have a high exposure or if you have exposure at the workplace against uh, special pathogens, then you should have specific vaccines. And five, finally, as of 65, but for many diseases, for many infectious diseases, there is an increase of morbidity and mortality. So make sure you have your boosters in place here as well. And this is particularly true for COVID. We showed you in our last edition that uh, you are at very high risk at an older age uh, to die and be hospitalized from COVID. Also, influenza, annual vaccination, your pneumococcal conjugate vaccination, zoster, and then you can think of meningococcal diseases as well. In addition, there are many, many other diseases that are reported to be, uh, that are recommended for specific situations, if you're a traveler, if you have underlying diseases, if you have immune deficiencies, if there is any emerging infection in your country, and then there may be other reasons. But this is additional vaccines that you should use if you are at risk following local recommendations. So check your vaccination card. You will find my slides or our slides uh, in as a PDF uh, below in our show notes. Any to anything to add, um, Melvin? Anything I forgot or any comment? Well, I, I think um, it's it's good that you mentioned about the traveler vaccine, Professor, because it's it's always good to know the diseases that are endemic in countries that you are visiting. Um, and and you know, we, we go to Asia or we go to Latin America or Africa. There are specific diseases that can be found there, and it's really always good to check with your doctor, your travel clinic before you um, travel, at least two weeks before, so you can get your vaccines and you know that your antibodies have uh, developed by then. Yeah. Thank you for the comment. And finally, I have one important piece of information, as Melvin already mentioned, side effects of vaccination are an important reason why people don't get their vaccine or they're hesitant of getting the vaccine. And this is a study from the United States that consists of two self-controlled studies. And the question you may write, you may ask yourself is, why self-control? So anything that happens after vaccination is not necessarily due to the vaccination. If I die in a car accident tomorrow after I received my COVID vaccine today, it doesn't mean that the vaccination I got today is the cause of my death tomorrow. So this is why you need a control group. You need to see in those who are vaccinated, is the side effect more common or is the adverse event more common than in those who did not get vaccinated? So you need to control for the fact that anything may happen even without vaccination. I don't explain the whole study. It was on subjects 65 plus years, and they specifically looked for uh, people who received the um, uh, mRNA COVID vaccines, and they looked for uh, acute myocardial infarction. Is this more common among vaccinated versus non-vaccinated subjects? They looked for pulmonary embolism. 
for immune thrombocytopenia or ITP, this is a laboratory finding where your thrombocytes go down. They look, they look for coagulation disorders, and then they look for Bell's palsy, where the facial nerve is, um, uh, is attacked. And then they look for myocarditis and pericarditis. And again, the age group was 65 plus. And I just summarized this with a conclusion. The authors did not find an increased risk for acute myocardial infarction, for thrombocytic purpura, for disseminated intravascular coagulation, for Bell's palsy, myopericarditis. And uh, I think this is altogether very, very good news, specifically for those who are asking themselves now if they should get the updated COVID-19 booster vaccine. So the answer is yes, nothing to worry about. It, the, the, these events may happen, but they are not caused by the vaccination. It's an adverse event following vaccination, but it is no side effect. Melvin, any comments, any additional views? This is very useful, Professor, and, and really, I think this is going to be helpful for people who are actually um, listening to science or data, because, of course, if you show this to them, they would change their minds, right? Although there are people who, no matter what kind of data you show, they will still say that, oh, because my neighbor had this and after vaccination, this happened, so they will never believe what you say. So I, I guess, you know, I mean, you can... You can just show data uh, and that's it, right? Um, whether they accept it or believe it or not, um, it depends on the person and the person's cognitive ability. Yeah. So thanks for this additional comment. And with this, we're already at the end of our Global Health class today. And just to summarize, Melvin told you about intelligent people getting their COVID-19 vaccines earlier than others. We spoke about past COVID infections and side effects as the top reason for not getting booster doses. And we showed you that adverse events and side effects should not be your concern for not getting the booster dose. Melvin reported about legionnaires in Poland, which is a severe outbreak and the cause has yet to be identified. I showed you vaccination calendars. And uh, the question to you is, is your vaccination status up to date? And finally, I showed you adverse events following COVID mRNA dosing in subject 65 plus. There's no concern for the side effects that the office looked for and that were mentioned in this paper. So very good news. Get your COVID vaccine tomorrow or today. Thanks for joining us today. I am Joe Schmidt and with me as always was Melvin Sernikas. But before I go to Melvin, our cartoon of the week is here where the doctor says, are you willing to get vaccinated against a potentially deadly disease? And the vaccinee says, I'd rather die, which I think is very cynical, right? Melvin, goodbye until soon. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you, everyone, and stay safe.